In Rwanda and Burundi, that part of Central Africa, there is a, a particular taint that comes up. It's called the potato taint. And it's caused by a little stink bug, I guess, that, that lays its egg in the coffee fruit. And when it's bad, this taint is it's just like raw potatoes can ruin a whole pot of coffee, one bean. Somebody has to look at the bean after it's uh, washed to tell whether it's been infected. Ah. So it's very troublesome to that region. Now, given all of that, I taste something like the potato taste in some coffees, but not so strongly that it's an outright uh, gag taint. But I'm getting the potato note. You are. I'm on my own on this because most people say it's either clean or it's overwhelmingly potatoey. But I find many cups from Central Africa, from Rwanda or Bundi. Yeah. I call it a starchy, okay. starchy note. Okay, I know. And I'm getting that here. I regret to say. I mean, there's a good sweetness. There's other aromatic notes. But I find this starchy. I don't know if you've ever smelled or tasted the Hawaiian root vegetable called taro. I lived in Hawaii yeah. for a while. We used to eat taro sliced and fried for breakfast. But I don't think it's a common descriptor. <laughs> But it's like a root vegetable, and it, it's very, I find it quite distracting. It's in, it's in yours. Yeah. You, it's not you, likely to be a mine, though. No, it is. It is. It is. Well, that's true. It could, because you have a different bag. Right. But. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, well, how about, now you're on. You're, you're on the spot. You have to do all this describing. I, I know. I'm going to try. A cleaner well, cup. Well, I'll do my best. Hold on. <laughs> This is, <laughs> suddenly we've lost our sweeps week position. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> oh, I'll tune in next time. There's got to be a CNN clip or something I can watch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to watch this guy. All right, let's try it. Well, I can't claim that it's the same thing you're tasting, but it is not a uh, pleasant taste that I'm getting uh, from this. Maybe it's, uh, you know, that I'm, Listen to this, but it's different. Hold on, let me. Uh, very different than either of the two. We could go to the positives and say it has a good mouthfeel. Yeah, I the think. mouthfeel's fine. And there is a good sweetness, but uh, there's an aromatic complex that I don't find attractive. Yeah. But let's try to find a, a fruit with positive associations we can associate with that. Yeah. As it cools, I mean, I'm getting a lessening of it, but. Yeah, I am too. It's our sort of a quieting down to being just a reasonable, low tone, balanced coffee. Yeah. Uh, that aromatic note is uh, maybe we're getting used to it, or maybe it's sort of uh, fading into the general context of the, of the cup. There is a kind of acidity that I could call whiny in it. Mm -hmm. But it is curious, I mean, th this particular taste, it's like fruit, but for me it, it sort of nudges too far over towards a, a root vegetable. It's certainly more vegetal than fruit-like to me. Right, vegetal is a good word, thank you. It's fruit, but it has a kind of vegetal, I mean, if, if you could find the molecules that carrots and potatoes have in common and isolate them, you might get something like what mm, I'm yeah, yeah, <laughs> tasting. Yeah, I've got carrots. You know, it's a kind of an essence of root vegetable. Yeah, yeah. Now, once you mention carrots, it actually yeah. reminds me of carrots. I have a lot more experience eating, oops, excuse me, I have a lot Eats. more experience with raw carrot. Now I'm getting a, like a beet. Beet. Root vegetable, and then there's the, the, there's the wine, I think we could probably find some flor floral notes in it. Yeah. Um, I don't get any chocolate. 
no, no, so, uh, no cocoa or chocolate. I'm afraid we're going to have to yeah. get the, the particulars on this coffee. This is Red Eye, and I will say, uh, you yeah, know, I have a nice conversation with the uh, roaster uh, company, too, that I like because they do some good things with their, uh, they're a not-for-profit, <laughs> have a good mission. Is this a natural? I think it is, but hang on a second. Let me. I let, see natural. Well, Here's what here's what my notes say. Natural tasting notes, yeah, but that could mean anything. I get that black tea, honey, and peach. Let's see. And then the, my notes are, it comes to us from Marambi Washing Station, named after the town it ro- resides in, Marambi Hill from Gozi from the Gozi, uh, Rook Rook Zone of Burundi. Washing station has an altitude of 1867 MASI, one of the highest of all Burundi. Well, that's a good sign, but the washed lot, here we are, is fermented in water for 24 hours and then dried for 12 days on raised beds before being exported. You know, Kevin, somebody who has a persistence of investigating cup profiles, we have three wonderful examples here. Two styles of, uh, of superb Burundi Central African uh, coffees and one that shows uh, some of the downside of the profile. Because this is a characteristic profile of Burundis and Rwandas that are not quite at the top of the taste pyramid for the style. Okay, well, that's one reason we try a variety of coffees I find the word natural sometimes confusing on packaging. Is it that it's overused? No, it's a very confusing word, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like <laughs> all coffee is natural. Yeah, it's one of our most natural products that we consume, really. It has, has no additives. Correct. comes to us just straight from the tree through a series of very coherent uh, processes. Nothing's added to it. So in a sense, coffee is uh, superbly natural no matter what style it's processed in. Yeah, but let me di- digress briefly on the history of uh, application of natural to coffees that have been dried in the whole fruit. Coffees in the mid 20th century there was no specialty industry, and coffee was really dominated completely by commercial categories, grading categories. Coffees that were dried in the whole fruit, as opposed to washed, were called unwashed. <laughs> so uh, you had washed and unwashed. The, the logic there, in part, was that what we now call naturals, which are dried in the fruit, were usually poor quality. In other words, the good coffee would be washed, and the poor quality coffees would be unwashed. The washing stations at the time would take in sound coffee to wash and would reject the other coffee, and the farmers would just lay it out in the dirt and dry it and sell it as a lower quality. When the, and the Brazilians, of course, did a very nice natural. That was the, the two good naturals back in those days were the best Brazils and Yemen coffees and, and also Harar coffees from Ethiopia, from northern Ethiopia. Those were the exceptions. Right. All the other naturals, or unwashed as they were called, were, were pretty bad. The Brazilians got really sick of this unwashed business, so they came up with the term natural. Mm -hmm. They really sold, I think, the coffee world on naturals. They also used to be called, in a neutral way, dry processed. Wet processed was washed, dry processed not. That was better, a little neutral. But it's a, it's a marketing term, I, I believe, that the Brazilians managed to sell the coffee world on. I want to say I think that is a brilliant thing to do because the term unwashed is probably yeah, right. it's just got right, all sorts exactly. of problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Right. And dry process is okay, I guess, yeah. but uh, it's kind of neutral, doesn't really sell. But it's definitely caused confusion. 
as someone who's going around and looking for these coffees for us to taste, you know, I want to sort of, I think I've mentioned to you, I want to split it between naturals, okay. so-called, and washed. Right. That's the way I've separated them, but the fact is I'm running into the word natural, <laughs> and they're not, they're not what context. I thought they were. Yeah. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.